Hey folks, Ted from American Rifle. We're just uh, we're gonna try putting a rifle together with our Xilo chassis, Archimedes action. We've got a barrel here, a night four scope, American Rifle scope rings and mag, and we got an Area 419 brake, and we got a little Trigger Tech trigger here. So to get this done, what do we need to do? So the first thing we attach the barrel and the action. To do that, we're gonna need our action wrench, which is right there. But first, to get the wrench into the action. and the Archimedes both, we have to remove the, uh, the, the ejector and the ejector pin. And then, actually the ejector pin doesn't have to come out, and so I can put it back in just so I don't lose it. And then we want to remove the action or the, uh, the bolt from the receiver. So we got to let that drop. Uh, so now we've got the receiver here, we've got the barrel, let's put the two together. Screw them together, not a big deal. Let's get that thread started. Hold on a second here. There it goes. And this barrel, we had them machined with a 12 point wrench contour. So there's really no tools apart from the receiver wrench. This is really the only special tool you need. We sell these on a website, they're like 70 bucks. This guy can go into the receiver, you want it all the way in, and then you want this one on the, you want that one on the barrel. This is just an inch and an eighth uh, combination wrench, box end on one, open end on one end, box on the other. Uh, about 30 bucks at Home Depot is where I got this one. And so, put a torque wrench on it. I've got the torque wrench set to 150 foot pounds put my foot on the barrel and then just lean on it get a good click now the barrel's tight take that off take the wrench out put the bolt back in All right and now actually let's put the bolt stop so that goes this way i think now the bolt's in it's easier to put the extractor back in if you have the bolt in the, in the receiver, pull the pin out, put drop the extractor in. Well, I'm sorry, the ejector, not the extractor. Called that the, the, called it by the wrong name. So I lined up the hole there, drop the pin in, screw that guy back in. I've already driven the pins out of the receiver to do the trigger, and so with the trigger, I want to run the bolt back, and I want to line this up by eye, and once I got it lined up, I'm just putting a little bit of side pressure on the trigger to keep it from moving, get that first pin, get it in there, and then do the same thing with the second one, line it up by eye. Give it a little tap. That'll get it started. Now the trigger will move. And I got this little punch here. I can drive the pins in the rest of the way. Super easy. So trigger's in there. Good click. Seems to be working. So now it's time to drop all this into the receipt or the uh, the chassis. And this is our forward receiver screw. It's got a little plastic nut when, when we ship these. We ship them with a screw in the hole and a little plastic nut to hold it in place. Um, we also, these chassis have a wedge here that basically uh, clamps the recoil lug to the chassis to further immobilize the uh, the action within the chassis, right? So I just take this, put it in here carefully, make sure the lug falls into the slot, and then I can go after the rear screw first. The rear screw is actually captured by the grip. So I'll get that going. So I got that, that's just snug. Put this one in, snug this guy up a little bit. 
So basically I want to pull these in. I've got the weight of the action and the barrel uh, directed towards the, the butt of the stock or the chassis. So I know my recoil lug is in contact with the chassis. I'm just going to snug these two screws up here. And you can tell I'm not using a torque wrench. I'm just doing this by feel. You know, you can apply. You can use a torque wrench if you want. Maybe 65 to 80 inch pounds maybe. So now tighten up that wedge first. Let's go back and forth on the two screws. And I tighten up the forward screw. Get the aft screw. Those two are together. So now we've got, what do we have here? We've got a barreled action. We've got the bolt. Injectors back in. It's bolted in securely. We're almost ready to go here. Uh, a brake. We need a brake and a scope. So we're going to use uh, Area 419, uh, the Hellfire, I think John calls it. John's from Area 419. But first, you got to put the adapter on, which I believe uh, we need a 5 8 wrench for. So get that on there. And I'm just going to. Yeah, and I just need to tighten that guy up. So I'm just going to stand on this thing to hold it down. We're uh, all right. So hold on here. That should be pretty good. And then his brake is over here. And I'm not going to be too concerned. Is there an up to this thing? Yeah, I think uh, this is. I think he's got a number six. This is a six millimeter brake, and I think he wants the number six directed up. And I just I want to get out of the frame here, so I'll just kind of stick this guy on here like that. This is a appears to be a left hand thread. Hold on a second here. Yeah, no, this is a left hand thread. Okay, so we want that six to be directed upwards. Looks pretty good there. I'm just eyeballing this. It's usually more than sufficient. That left hand thread keeps messing me up, but okay. So that there, the brakes there. Now we need, we're gonna do the bipod next. Uh, this is just a Harris bipod with an Area 419 adapter for the Swiss Arca. And then we've got the little, uh, John does the Arca lock, which is pretty nice to engage the rail so the bipod doesn't slip under recoil. Our, uh, we've got the Arca lock notches cut into our chassis. That's an integral part of it. Okay, so now we need a scope. We've got a Night Force scope here from my friend Kalen. And we got some American Rifle Company scope rings. If you guys haven't used these before, I highly recommend these. Not because I've designed, I'm the guy that designed them and I sell them, but actually because they're probably, if not the best, they're, I think they're the best rings on the market. So basically, the way this works is super simple. Nicest thing about these is the fact that they don't rotate the scope when you tighten up your scope clamp, which is super nice because there's nothing more annoying than getting your scope lined up and then you having it misaligned when you tighten up your uh, rings. I'm just going to leave that just loose so the ring will slide around. Now there's some, there's some radio towers off in the distance. And when they build radio towers, they, they, they build them plump, straight up and down. So I'm just going to use that as a reference to align the reticle once the scope is on the rifle. Because we want, we want our scope to be oriented so that our vertical, uh, our vertical portion of the crosshair is running something that's 
basically or is parallel to something that's plumb with gravity when our level in the chassis is indicating level. So I put the second scope ring on. I usually like them pretty far forward. So I'm going to put this one all the way forward here. I'm going to make sure this guy's loose. I can find the slot. Yeah, so they're both in there. Now you want to push them forward a little bit when you do this. So you're up against the, the forward side of the, the, the slot. The, your, the, the, the rails are slotted for recoil. You want to be biased forward on the rail. Alright, so I think that's on there. That looks pretty good. You want to inspect, make sure you're clamped properly. The scope is still loose in there. So now, with the scope loose, I want to deploy a level. I just want to look at the rifle, or look through the scope at the at the radio towers. Any vertical reference will do. That, yeah, the towers actually work really well. So first thing I want to do is look at the rifle on the bipod. Make sure I like, make sure it's indicating level. Hold on a second here. I'll loosen up the bipod so I can cant the rifle. Is there a pivot on this one? Tight. They are really tight. Do you need that? Oh, actually, that's okay. That's okay. It's just tight, but it'll move. All right. So, first thing, let's get the rifle leveled up. Don't need to look through the scope here, but right there, I got the level between the two lines. So now, all right. Yeah, this actually, those towers work really well, huh? <laughs> really well. Okay, check my level. That's still looking good there. And where's my wrench? Check my eye relief. Super easy. Nice thing about these rings is this one scope clamp screw. They're not four, they're not six. Level's good. So now all I gotta do is tighten this first screw carefully. Snug it up. Now we recommend 55 inch pounds. However, if you have calibrated hands like mine, <laughs> you don't need a, a torque wrench. I'm going to make one little adjustment here. to the uh, tower and move the, the, the level on the scope. Okay, that looks good there. Okay, final check and still good. 
Okay, so that wasn't too hard. That was done in real life, in real time. Tighten that guy up. Tighten this guy up a little bit more. This guy a little bit more. And this guy. Feels about right. That oh, feels about right. All right. So that is a fully assembled rifle. We're gonna have to zero this. Let's just fire around real quick to make sure. Everybody's got their ears or fingers in their ears at least. Make sure everything works as, as intended. Everybody good with the ears? Hold on, our cameraman is moving into position. This is the sweet spot we found. Good? Yep. Safety. Good. Pull this out a little bit. Move this up. All right, ready? That's it. So that's how you assemble a rifle at the range in the Yakima sun in beautiful Yakima, Washington. Out here with Kalen Wojcik. Did I pronounce that right? You did. Yeah. What's the name of the site? Modern Day Sniper. Modern Day Sniper. And uh, this is Ted from American. I'm Ted from American Rifle. So thanks for watching and uh, go have fun. <laughs>